this is a um, mixed up session about direct debits and I'm up first of three, three of us. Um, I'm Rich, uh, my company is Artful Robot, um, I do CV and websites and open source cunning stuff for lots of organisations doing good things, campaigns, charities, NGOs, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, we're going to be looking at an extension I wrote for CV CRM and Go Cardless. Um, so, uh, these are really for mind notes, not yours. <laughs> um, so, what is Go Cardless? Uh, it's a cost effective direct debit bureau built for online use. So, it's quite a young company, I think it's less than 10 years old. Um, but whereas most direct debit bureaus are um, quite clunky and have are sort of caught up with the idea that people want to do stuff online, Go Cardless is always aimed straight online, it's only online. Um, and uh, so it's coming from quite a different angle to most, most of the traditional ones. It's an excellent choice for small or medium sized organisations because there's no setup costs and there's no ongoing monthly fees, which makes it, what's happened there? Which makes it, too, I just clicked modules, didn't I? Uh, which makes it cheap on, on, to get set up when you're small. Um, I did a, I did a um, comparison of how cheap, and this is one thing that amused me about this is that I just found out that in October they put their price up, so <laughs> this is up to date now. But um, charity I, want, I worked at, we did some analysis recently comparing Go Cardless to a couple of other direct debit bureaus, um, Smart Debit and RSM 2000 they were. So if your average donation is £5 a month from some of you are very small, um, if you've got 100 supporters, um, this is how much of the donations you're going to lose in fees to the to the service. So go cardless, you lose four percent, no matter how many supporters you have. The traditional bureaus start up, you could be losing twenty percent of your income if you've only got hundred supporters with an average of five pound donation, um, and it comes down like that. The traditional ones, um, the, the fees tend to scale with the number of um, what's called file um, collections that they run. So if you want to offer people, do you want to pay on the 1st of the month or the 15th, that's two file runs. If you want to offer three dates, that's three file runs. And so that's the, that's the difference in these lines between the pinks and the, and the greens, is the more file runs you, you, you run, it's a monthly cost, so, so it would increase upwards like that. If you move on to ten pounds, they're still way above the the go cardless line. Twenty pounds a month, they start to they start to head towards converging on on go cardless. But by that time, go cardless is down to a one percent loss. Um, and when you get up to an average donation of fifty pounds a month, and you get you, and you've got five hundred supporters doing that, that's when go cardless ceases to be um, cost effective. With the exception that with Go Cardless, you, you get unlimited um, file, file collection runs, so you can collect it any day of the month with no additional costs to yourself. Uh, so, that, so if you offered you know, a range, then you've still got probably to get up to about 1,000 if you're doing two file runs. Uh, to, to, um, so it's, it's cheap, you know. It's, uh, it's good uh, for small businesses. Uh, it's great for developers. Um, it's got a really modern REST API. Um, it's got webhooks. That's when the external service Go Cardless tells, tells your system something has happened. Um, and those webhooks are fully logged, so you can log into Go Cardless and see all the webhooks that it's fired off at your site and what happened. Um, and you can even resend them, which is great for testing. Um, and finally, they have a, a very strict separation of um, sandbox test, testing accounts and live accounts. So you have two Go Cardless accounts, um, one for testing, and it's exactly the same as the live one, except no actual money moves anywhere. But the, the rest of it works exactly the same, it looks exactly the same. So that's a very useful thing. 
Um, the drawbacks of it are that donors will be aware of the GoCardless brand, both in the sign-up process and on their bank statements. Um, although the bank statement can include your organisation's name as well after the GoCardless. Um, it is possible to, if you've got your own back sun number, to use that with GoCardless, but at that point they've got a different pricing thing and it, it all becomes quite expensive to do. So there is that drawback. It's got a weird quirk, which is that you can use direct debits for single payments, for one-off payments. I'll come back to what I think about that in a minute. Um, and it's got some, rooms, some room for improvement as well, just having used it quite a few times. Things I've come across are um, the webhook that says I've taken some money on your behalf. It doesn't tell you how much of that money it's snuffled off in fees. Um, and it used to be dead simple, it was just 1%, but now there's different fee structures and so it ought to tell you it doesn't. Um, this is one that bugs me because I manage several clients' accounts. Is managing multiple accounts requires a different email for each account. If you just do, if you're just somebody, if you're one organisation using GoCardless, this isn't going to bother you because you only need one email then for that. But that, so that's a minor niggle. And finally, I emailed GoCardless saying, um, oh, I'm doing a presentation about your service to a uh, national conference of Civic CRM, which is used by 10,000 organisations worldwide and you know, they're progressive types there. And just wondering whether you had any ethical policies because, you know, I said obviously they're like, organisations that are working in solidarity with people on the front line of what climate change means to the world don't want to be working with companies that are investing in fossil fuel companies, um, for example, or, you know, if we're a cancer charity, it doesn't want to find out that the bank it uses is investing in tobacco. Um, but um, they said, We'll get back. We'll get back to you. I've passed it on to somebody else. Uh, but um, strangely, silence there. So, um, so we'll just, we'll. I think we'll um, we'll take what you want from that. Um, anyway, so on to the. This is a good mouthful. The artful robot, Civi CRM, Go Cardless, Payment Processor Extension. Um, woo. Uh, let's unpack some of that. Um, basically, it lets Civi CRM use Go Cardless to set up recurring donations. Uh, regular donations are then entered automatically into your CVCRM database. Uh, and if a direct debit gets cancelled, then that's, that updates your database too. It works with <coughs> CVCRM's normal contribution pages, um, so it's easy to set up. But it's also been written so that developers can create an entirely bespoke user interface and still result in in direct debits being set up properly in, in Civi. So, for example, a um, client of mine has got this donate form, um, sort of allows you to do <laughs> anything you want. You can monthly or one off on uh, different currencies, and whether you're in the UK, it makes a difference on gift aid and that sort of thing. But anyway, if you choose, so they've got it so that if it's monthly and it's pounds and they're in the UK, it'll use Go Cardless because then it expects them to have a UK bank account, which is necessary for direct debits. Uh, otherwise, it'll use Stripe and it'll deal with it that way. So all of that stuff is then is 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 taken care of, and that's not a Civi CRM um, donation page. So if you continue on to Go Cardless, is to, to continue with GoCardless, this is the this is the, the screen you get. GoCardless's brand here is quite subtle. It's not a lot to complain about, but it is it is there down there. And then after you've set it up, you you'll be back to your site for for a thank you page. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, status and limitations. Um, so it only does recurring payments. The this this payment processor. Um, it would be possible to make, make it work with single one-off payments. Um, my experience of using GoCardless to take single one-off payments is that is not good. Basically, people feel that entering their bank details to make a one-off payment is weird. Um, they associate direct debits rightly with 
recurring payments. It makes them nervous. They're, why am I giving them bank details? It's a bit odd. Um, it creates a lot of friction um, in the donor experience and puts them off. One client moved, we were doing this, and then they moved to taking card payments and all of a sudden they found that actually their supporters did want to give them money and they'd just been put off by having to part with their bank account details to do so. So, um, so yeah, if anyone needs it to do one-offs, uh, I'm, I'm for hire, uh, come talk to me, but otherwise uh, I'd advise against it. Um, it's got a beta flag, um, but it's been in production use for a year, pretty much now since November 2016. Um, it's listed as beta um, mainly because I can't take the weight of responsibility of, of people going, oh, look what's happened. Uh, um, but um, there's, there was one issue that was holding me back from saying, okay, this is stable, which was about um, whether it properly processed memberships when the payments came and whether it updated memberships and things. I believe that that is all fine, but because none of my clients use Civi member for, um, no, none of them do memberships as it happens, then um, I, I, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I haven't tested it. So I need a guinea pig if anybody's uh, <laughs> wanting, to, wanting to try that. It should work fine, but it'd be nice to know that it did work fine. Um, and then once that's, once that's there, then I'll, I, I'll take the beta flag off it. Fantastic. Uh, please use the issue queue for any issues that you find with it. How do you get it? How do you get the extension? Uh, what would you do? First of all, you register sandbox and live accounts at GoCardless. It's just gocardless.com, follow the links. Um, then you would download a zip file from the extension page on Civi CRM's website, uh, which looks like that. You'll notice if you're, if you're on this site and you're searching for that, there's another one which is called Go Cardless Payment Processor. And this one's called Go Cardless Payment Processor for Civi CRM. Um, what, the way to think about it is the longer the title, the more functionality it's got. So <laughs> this, this one is, is the one that I'm talking about. That's the one I've written. It's the one you want. Um, uh, or you can download it from the releases page on, on the, the GitHub repo. This is always likely to be more up to date. And it also has the how to install guide there as well. Um, so anyway, you'd install the extension uh, in, the, in the normal way once you've got that zip file. Uh, and then the next thing you do is you register the payment processor using your sandbox credentials. So... If we were to, ooh, that's not the right button. Uh, if we were to add a payment processor in Civi, uh, we'd say it's the Go Cardless one. Um, payment method is also, well, we've got direct debit on there, something like that, I don't know. You can set those fields up, you get that. The only important bits that are different are API ask, access token and webhook secret. And this is for live payments, and down here is the test payments or sandbox one. The API access token you create on GoCardless's website, um, it's, it's dead simple, um, and an API access token is just a very long string of um, gibberish that you copy from one website and you paste in that box. Um, so you are on, this is GoCardless's website, you go to developers, you go create access token, you give it a name, you say read write access, and then it gives you that long string which you copy and paste. Uh, webhook secret, make something up. Uh, monkey's fridge, tap nearly out of time, would be a good one. You know, it's quite long, nobody's going to guess it. You need a different webhook secret for uh, live payments as for the test payments. That's really important, it won't work if that's the same. Um, so, yeah, so you set up that's how you set up the payment processor. And finally, the last stage is to register your site's webhook. Um, that's in the documentation as to what that would be with each of your GoCardless accounts, the live and the test one. You've got to make sure you get the right webhook with the right thing, or it won't work. Um, create a contribution page and use the test drive mode to test it. 
Um, one thing I just caution against, because I've had people say, oh, this isn't working, I'm doing this, and you go, yeah, that won't work, is if you use the test the sandbox credentials in the live fields on the payment processor, that's never going to work, right? Because they have very strict separation of, of sandbox and live accounts. So don't do that, because it just won't work, and you'll be frustrated and confused. Um, final thought is that I've recently implemented SEPA, SAPA, Core, in Go Cardless for another CRM, um, and that works pretty much fine. So that does open the door to a, a potential thing for this: is that you you could use Go Cardless to access non-pound donations as well if we develop that feature. Um, that's it. Hi, I'm uh, Matthew Wyatt from uh, MJW Consulting, um, and I've recently. Um, Effectively rewritten a, a, an older extension um, but for, for Civi CRM 4.7 um, to integrate Smart Debit with uh, Civi CRM. Um, Smart Debit is a, is a company similar in many ways, I think, to uh, to Go Cardless, but um, I think they've been around a bit longer and, and they're perhaps more focused on you know, the, the traditional sort of direct debit model. So they're a, a bureau for handling direct debits. Um, and they, they, but um, they, they also allow, they have an API integration, um, and they allow the payments to be taken online. So, um, so their website, Smart Debit for Code UK. Um, Richard gave quite a good analysis of the associated costs between the two, I think, um, which will come to him. Um, so who's Smart Debit for? Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense until you start to have a few more payments going through, I think. so. Um, the, uh, the bureau service that they offer, they offer a number of different services, but the bureau service is what we've integrated and that um, is for sort of larger organisations that, um, that want their own sun, um, which is, uh, is not, what you, not what, what you see in the sky, but it's, um, it's a subscriber user number for the bank um, and, and um, that uh, is something that your organisation applies for directly generally, I think, and it allows for, um, for your, your, your bank statements to be entirely self-branded. Um, so that what you know, no mention of smart debit anywhere. Um, what's what's included with with, with smart debit? Um, well, automated back submissions, access to their online portal, full submission history, uh, bank account validation, the API, and they, they offer customer support as well. It, it's up to them to sell you to, to sell you smart debit. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to show you the integration. So. Um, there's uh, obviously there's no cost to the Civi Cero integration. That's the bit that we've we've done here. Um, the the fees from Smart Debit on their website, their base package appears to be something along along those lines. And and as, as Rich showed quite quite well in those graphs, I think it's it's fairly expensive until you get to a larger number of transactions. At which point it starts to become cheap. It starts to become much cheaper. Um, but I think they do handle more of the um, more more of the sort of um, admin side of things, you know, and so, so they will actually send out letters and things for, you know, direct debit letters and things as well, and direct debit emails if you want them to do that. Um, set up, I think, takes a lot longer than GoCardless would do, um, because there's more, they, they want to verify, they, they verify the pages, sure, that, uh, you know, it's the pages in Civi CRM, they want, they want the bank to see those, and, and um, so there's a little bit of a process, but they guide you through all of that. Um, so the the, uh, the integration within Civi CRM, well, it, it's an extension that you can download. It's uh, org.civicrm.smartdebit. You can find it in the extensions directory. Um, the um, once it's installed, you enable the extension and uh, you have a configuration page. Um, first thing it does is it uh, will validate that you've actually put in the right credentials there. So um, so here it's showing that um, we've got valid live credentials, invalid test credentials. Um, and we set up a few default parameters. So we've got service, the service user number there that's been given by the bank. Um, the extension generates um, your sort of transaction ref direct debit references, and it starts with a prefix that we, we specify here. So it'd be something like you know, web 00572 or something. And that's, that's then the, the reference that is, is used for their direct debit. Um, and you can see that in their online portal. You can see it um, within Civi CRM um, and on the direct debit mandates. Configuration of the payment processor. Um, well, it's it's the same process as any other payment processor. You go into the payment processor screen, select Smart Debit, and you configure your live payment details and your test, pest, 
test payment details. They have three parameters. They have a, uh, an API username, an API password, and what you can't see just below there is a PSL ID, which is basically another string of text. Um, uh, and they'll, they'll give you all three of those. Um, the way it works within CV CRM is that it, um, well, it, it supports both recurring and one-off payments. Um, I, I agree really with, with what Richard said about GoCardless and about the, it doesn't really make sense to do direct debits as one-offs. Um, how, having said that, it's very easy within CV CRM to configure, uh, to, to configure the contribution pages such that they will take one-off payments. So, so it, it makes sense to do something sensible, I think, when, you know, when, when that happens. And, and um, smart debit, within CV CRM will cope with that perfectly fine. It will create a recurring contribution with an end date before the next payment be taken. So an annual, um, an annual recurring contribution that you're taking one payment would, would finish, sort of would, would set a date of say nine months after the initial payment. So it's effectively a recurring payment with, a, with a, an end date before the next payment. <laughs> um, and it appears, or it, it appears within CV CRM as, as any other recurring contribution would do, and, and you see a list of contributions for each payment that's been taken. Um, your online contribution page uh, looks a little bit like this. And I, I've just taken little screenshots out rather than trying to do a demo, because the, the, the one earlier failed fairly terribly. And, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, so, it's, so it's sort of, and, and, and actually, um, you know, you, you can install this on your own site and sort of see it, but, um, but it gives you the, the general sort of idea. So, so this is your, you know, your online sign up um, up here. You've selected a, a membership in this case. Uh, you, you go through, you select your payment method, smart debit. It presents you with this little uh, bit of text. And um, as I said, these pages get presented to the bank. The bank seems quite happy with them. I think there's a requirement to have the direct debit logo on there and, um, um, and then sort of certain bits of text. So things, you know, saying you've got the right to cancel the direct debit. <coughs> and then below here, that you, you, you get um, a set of fields to fill in um, your um, bank, bank details and address. Um, this, uh, so I, th I, think, I think one of the difference with GoCardless is GoCardless redirects you to their site to take the, to set it up, doesn't it? So that's one of the differences with the, the way this is implemented, is the Smart Debit integrates it entirely into your own site. Um, so, so it's like any other sign-up page and you just you follow through. Um, a sort of side effect of that is, is that CV CRM um, supports on the back end, it looks exactly the same, because it totally is, but w w when you go into the, um, contact tab and the contributions tab on, on a um, CV CRM contact, there's a submit credit card payment option. Now, Smart Debit will work with that, uh, and, and in fact, any of the payment processes that, that take the payment without going off-site will work with it. Um, but at the moment, off-site processes don't work on the back end. Um, so, so Smart Debit does work for admin on the admin side. So uh, it depend, obviously it depends on whether you're organizations allowed to work but in theory somebody could ring you up on the phone and you could fill in their bank details and, and set up the direct debit on their behalf um, if that was allowed within your organization um, so um, the extension itself once it's installed it will automatically synchronize um, payments failed payments um, so and it'll do that every day on a, on a scheduled um, scheduled job um, and those contributions will be added to CV CRM updated within CV CRM um, one little thing with, with direct debit payments is that, um, and it's fairly universal, is it takes, it can take sort of 15, 20 days for the, the payment to be verified with the bank. It's the process, it's the, the process of setting up with the bank and everything else. So, so by default, um, smart debit will, you know, the, the, the payment in CIVI will go into a pending status and 10 or 15 days later, when it's actually taken, that payment will turn into a completed payment the recurring contribution will become um, will become a in progress one. Um, takes collection reports. These the Audis and Arud reports. Well, they 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 are acronyms for something, but um, but what they actually do is they um, give you a whole list of reasons why payments have failed to be taken, um, and that will get put into CV CRM. The contributions will go into a failed state. Um, and that that happened automatically. There is a manual synchronization mode, which can be used to um, to sort of um, to sort of get you out of trouble if if um, if, if you've um, if you, if you need to synchronize things, um, I'll say any more about that, but that's just a, that effectively runs, runs the automated job manually, and you can you can do that if, if you need to. That tends to be if you've already been using Smart Debit, but not not with CV CRM, and then you come to integrate it. And 
along those lines, there is also a reconciliation mode um, which allows you to look at what Smart Debit has in terms of direct debit payments and actually and, and, and synchronize, sort of link those to contacts within Civi CRM so you can actually start using Smart Debit with their online portals and, and they have their own online pages and then at a later date integrate with Civi, although it's great if you can do it all at once because then you don't have to worry about reconciliation. But there's a little sort of um, set of filters and a, and a little wizard process that you can use here which um, allows you to uh, select a smart debit contribution, uh, sorry, smart debit transaction, transaction ID, link it to a contact, link it to a membership, and link it to a recurring contribution, and then it will create all of that for you. Um, so Vida, Vida Consulting developed the original extension, and um, the new extension was, was, was funded by Circle Interactive. Um, so <coughs> thanks to those guys in that. Their, Circle in particular are using it quite actively with a number of their clients now. Um, for more information, well, um, it's got documentation at the new Civi CRM docs website, so um, go to docs.civicrm.org and you'll find it in the list there. It's, um, it's very easy to find. And um, finally, it's in the extensions directory, and again, you can search for Smart Debit in the extensions directory and it will come straight up. Um, that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to try and give you a very different approach on Direct Debit. Um, the module developed is, oh, I'm Bjorn from Systopia. Um, the module we developed is for the Euro-wide CEPA standard. Uh, I don't know, you've probably heard the term being tossed around, but it basically means, it's, um, it's the single Euro payments area, so that means all of the countries using the Euro came up with a common standard for uh, direct debits, which then, as I said, harmonizes the money exchange between those countries. And uh, obviously the standards go way beyond direct debit, but we're just gonna be taking care of direct debit here. Um, and it also expands, we're gonna get there in a minute, to countries beyond the uh, Euro currency, but that's what initially sort of um, triggered uh, the whole development of this. And um, since a lot of countries had their own direct debit in place, and uh, every country had a different system, so it took a while to catch on. It, was, it became kind of complex, and the whole standard is trying to cover all the peculiar individualisms of the different countries. But it's been uh, in use for quite a while now. Uh, I think uh, three years, depends on the country. They, some of them uh, came in later, some sooner. Um, this is a map of all the countries supporting it. So um, you can see it's all the Euro countries, but also <coughs> like the UK, uh, Norway. Um, they're kind of attached, Switzerland as well is in there. Um, they have different currencies, but they're kind of attached. Um, I haven't got a lot of experience. We're going to get to that later as well. I don't have a lot of experience with interacting with these countries. Uh, but in theory, it should work. They might have a little bit, needed a little bit of extra tweaking. Um, but the good thing about this is um, it's free, right? Um, the Basically, all the payments are without extra cost or charges. Uh, but it comes with... Um, with the obligation of you managing the mandates, which is basically, I don't know what it's called in Britain, but same. the same thing. Um, so that means what we did in this extension is create a management system for mandates, so you can sign up people, you can also stop them. Um, yeah, you can save money, obviously, um, which is, this is the reason I don't have the fancy graphs, because it's free. Um, so, exactly, we're cutting out the payment bureau which has a bunch of advantages. Um, it's not just the costs, I think it's also, it's, it's good that people can ring you up and say, I want to stop this, and you don't have to talk to the bureau to stop it, or have your extension do that. It's kind of being more in control, but it comes at the cost um, of you actually having to submit um, the collection files to the bank in order to collect it. Um, and you have to be organized enough to do this in a, in a sensible way, because if you forget it, then you're not going to be getting any money. Um, <coughs> pretty much like the other extension that we've seen before, it integrates with Civi Contribute, so um, SIPA collected uh, contributions will look exactly the same. They're going to have a payment type SIPA. Um, and we added the dashboard 
for SIPA, um, where you can see which kind of um, collections are coming up. I'm going to show that to you in a minute. Um, it works pretty solidly, I would say, as we've been productive, been productive for almost three years now with a bunch of clients. Uh, it works very smoothly. Um, it can handle huge files and huge amounts of, um, of collections. And uh, especially if you're a bigger organization that has, I don't know, like 10,000, 20,000 collections uh, in one collection, uh, you do actually save a lot of money. Um, it says demo. I think I'm going to just briefly show you how the system looks. Okay, so as I said, we added a dashboard. You can see that here. So what it'll show you, um, actually the SEPA standard comes, comes with the one-off and the recurring option. Um, in most of Euro, um, it's actually people would rather give you your bank account details than your credit card number. I think it's, a, it's just a cultural thing. I think we're not that used to credit cards yet. Uh, but everybody's happy to just type in their bank uh, numbers even for a one for a one-off donation. Um, there's also there's also um, within the SEPA standards um, there's quite a lot of checks and balances against abuse. So, for example, if you if you collect uh, money from somebody that you just got his bank um, account number, you can start collecting. But um, the person can, after up to 30 months after your collection, challenge that, and then you would have to produce some kind of a signature of that person. So people feel kind of safe uh, giving their bank's bank account details uh, because they know that if it's being abused, they have all the time in the world uh, to get their money back. Um, which, um, on the other hand, means for you as an organization, if you want to use that, uh, you have to make sure that you try and get signatures or any kind of other uh, buy-in, provable, uh, like a proof of people actually wanting to, do, uh, to donate. Uh, because otherwise the banks are going to get nervous if a lot of people challenge you and you can't produce the, um, the, uh, the signature or any kind of proof. Because for the bank then it's a credit risk, right? Because if the last 30 months of um, donations you've been collected all get challenged, then you're going to go bankrupt and the bank's going to be um, in a pickle. Uh, but that's just a, a little excursion. So the, the idea is that you can um, have a, um, you just update that, and it'll give you, and it'll give you just a, oh, yeah, okay, it was already up to date. So what this does is what usually the bureau does, right? It just looks through all the mandates you have, checks what needs to be collected, um, and then you can go and say, okay, I want to close that. It, it gives you a date, so you have to set up a specific collection date. Um, in SEPA, it's not common, and the extension doesn't support that to collect on just any date. You just usually do, because you also have to submit it in time. So the idea is to have a fixed set of uh, collection date, usually like between two and four dates a month, maybe just one. Uh, in this case, it's the 15th. So it tells you um, this is the 15th. Actually, you have to submit it before that, so the bank has time to check. Usually, um, times vary from bank to bank. Usually, this is, I think, six days, which is a lot. Usually, it's like a day or two before. But if you submit after that, the bank will reject it. So this is part of the having to be organized that I was talking about. Um, and then the idea is to close it, because what's important is that on the system, the group that you send to the bank is in the same status as the one you sent to the bank. So these are um, these kind of um, XML files that have been um, that have been designed, uh, specified in the standard, and your bank should be should accept those and then just um, basically do the direct debits and they go right into your bank account. So there's no no bureau or there's no money being wired around. It's just going straight from the donor's bank account to your bank account, um, and this is the, the file specifying from which bank account the money is supposed to be collected. Um, so you're supposed to upload that, um, the bank will accept that, and then you say, okay, this file is submitted, which then takes you to another screen, which is the list of already closed groups. So you can see this is kind of the, the management of the, um, of the individual batches 
that you've been, that you've collected. Um, yeah, you can look in here and see the contributions and do various sort of administrative tasks. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how to create a mandate. Let's just get somebody here. Um, it also comes with a payment processor, which is a bit of a stretch because it uses it, it doesn't communicate with anything. Um, which is kind of abusing the payment processor structure, but it gives you the option to enter the for, for the um, donor to enter their bank account details um, and um, and then come up with uh, an ex a uh, proper mandate and you collect money from the uh, contact. But you can also obviously create a mandate in the back office. Uh, so basically, yeah, just obviously the amount. Um, this is just like this is what the bank account numbers look like, um, and then you can say so. Is it a one-off contribution or recurring one? Let's say it's a recurring one. Here's a list of your um, specified um, collection days, and then you can say, I don't know, I want to collect that quarterly. And there you go. Ooh. This is the uh, the reference number. So um, that's something that makes sense to, dis um, you could specify that yourself. And it makes sense to some degree because it ha can have some information about where the money was coming from, what date um, it's from. Um, and since it's going to show up in all the bank statements, it might be helpful to come up with something that's not just a random number. Um, and obviously, since, since we're the one managing this, we can also define uh, basically, all the aspects of collection. Uh, so there's some super settings there somewhere. Here we go. Um, you can actually have multiple creditors. A creditor is a, a registered authority with a basically a sum number in uh, in Britain. Uh, you could have multiple <coughs> of those if you need them. Um, but uh, obviously, here you can specify you know the, the the cycle days, which is the collection days. Um, the, the days that you have, it's basically this is setting it up in the way that your bank asks you to, because um, since you're dealing with your bank, the bank that holds your bank account, you have to sort of comply with their regulations and they, might, they vary sometimes from bank to bank. Um, and then obviously you can um, define which message you want uh, to show up on the bank statement of your donor. Um, and there's all, all other sorts of um, sort of tweaks and features. I'm not going to go into detail here. But at the end of the day, uh, the, the bottom line kind of is that with all the uh, benefits and all, all the obligations, uh, it's your mandates, you're supposed to manage them, right? Um, so yeah, I think let's go back to the presentation. So the module is quite mature. As I said, it's been, um, it's been in use for like three years. Um, we have a lot of productive installations, most of them in Euro using countries. Um, I know um, that there's, I said, uh, there's somebody sort of mending it to work for Norway, somebody for Switzerland, actually Parvis told me the other day that he's sort of tweaking it to work for the UK as well. Um, so we're going to try and integrate that um, because um, it's the same thing, as long as everybody um, complies to the standards that have been set, the SIPA standards, there's no reason you couldn't interchange money with the rest of Europe for no extra charge. And that's quite a, quite a benefit. Um, it can be found on GitHub. There's actually, it should be in the official documents uh, repository as well. Um, yeah, we have um, a stable branch with the 1.2, which is just every half a year or so get some uh, bug fixes and upgrades. And obviously, something like integrating the other countries um, is probably going to happen in another branch, and probably not in the next couple of weeks. Rather, we're talking probably half a year or something. But eventually, we'll hopefully get, get there. Yeah, questions? Uh, I presume if if we if you implement the coming from different currencies, um, the, the bank charge there would be bank charges involved. I don't think so. Not they might 
skim some money off by the change rates. But I think this, the safer standard itself is defined to be uh, without extra charges. So uh, what you're paying for with the bureaus is the service of the bureau actually managing your mandates. Yeah, but even if we went direct to the bank in the UK and said transfer some money to Germany, that's why we use TransferWise. I, I haven't heard of a bank in, in Europe doing that. What they charge for a lot is if the payment gets cancelled. Yeah. Um, so there you have to sometimes pay some hefty fees. But um, it, I haven't heard of a bank charging for this. And my suspicion is that, you know, that they're not allowed to. But I, I'm not, I can't, uh, I'm not sure about that. Both of those bank details are they hosted on the SIBI sites? Both of them are they stored in the SIBI Yes. Here, so with SIBI definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you keep them or just send them off. Yeah, no, Smart Debit, we don't keep them. Um, so, um, yeah, they, they get submitted, so they do go through your site to be submitted, not stored, but they're not stored on the site, no. Um, yeah, they're yeah. stored at Smart Debit, um, but you can't access them. Yeah, here, obviously, they have to be stored in SIBI. However, these bank numbers, because of all the checks and balances on the process, they're not the same level of security uh, and the same tier as um, credit card numbers, for example, that you can easily abuse. Yeah, these are more, that the whole idea was that, you, that your bank account number doesn't have to be secret anymore because it's kind of uh, schizophrenic anyway. You're supposed to put it in, like your credit card number, you put it into web forms of who got knows who, and then later on you can't really, right? Um, if there's, we still have time and there's no questions, I can give you a couple more. Um, yeah, there's, there's been um, improvements in terms of, so it, it is a problem if you upload the file to the bank and then don't close it on your system. So the problem here is it doesn't get automatically uploaded, so the system doesn't know when you actually finish downloading it, uh, uploading it to the bank. So if you then forget to close it, and there's a new mandate coming in, and it just happens to be batched into the same group, uh, you're out of sync with what the bank is collecting and what CV Serum knows about. So that's, that, that's been a problem in the past, so we tried to put some extra checks there so to prevent you from doing this. Um, yeah, so it, what you can do is, um, mandate tokens is, um, it gives you tokens of mandates for um, emails or, or uh, PDF letters or something being sent out. Because, um, as I said, what the bureau often does is uh, it, just, it sends a pre-notification uh, saying we're going to collect that kind of amount from your account on a regular basis. And if you haven't done that by uh, the sign-up process or whatever other means, um, you could use those to create those letters yourself. Usually, uh, the nice thing about this is, y yes, it's a chore, right? But on the other hand, usually people use the opportunity to couple this with some updates on your organization, or you know, if you have to, uh, if you have to talk to them anyway, you can just as well um, use it for for giving them some updates. Um, yeah, I mean, since probably very few of you are using it, I think the the improvements aren't too interesting. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the flip side of the other <laughs> the other slide. Um, where the uh, integration with membership is because nobody's using it so far. Pretty much same as you. No, was it you? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, to wrap it up, um, I think it's a it's a great opportunity for CBCM if we get uh, more countries in. Uh, the better. All the countries using the euro, it works for already. So um, our, our German clients collect from, well, basically all over the place. Um, obviously, uh, it's probably more likely to have, like, if you're a Belgian client, it's more likely to have clients in the countries surrounding you um, than in, like, bigger countries. But uh, I think the, the, the benefits are, are pretty clear. And I think the idea of managing your own mandates with all that entails, gives you a lot of opportunities. Um, and yeah, that's basically it.